Well, that's not bad, but I guarantee you there's a few people in that crowd that spends just a little bit too much time at the hotel bar last night. What about it, St. Louis? Are you ready to go racing here tonight? First late model heat races on the track. Eight laps is the distance. Top three, top three will advance to tonight's first preliminary feature. Lineup looks like this. Starting on the pole, setting the pace and bringing them around. Our Parker Sport West Virginia. He was the fast qualifier in Group A in the Pro Tech Auto Sales. Tony of Boston General Contractor on Team Race Pilots. Putting the night K car. It's fast Freddy Carpenter. And on the outside of him, Alan Mooresburg, Tennessee, and the petrol towing LRI 45 Team Zero Custom Power and Entry. It's Scott Blomquist. Bio 2 on the inside, two-time and defending Gateway Dirt National Champion out of Oakland, Illinois, in the 32. It's the smooth operator, Bobby Pierce. And on his outside, out of Highland, Illinois, he has made every Gateway Dirt Nationals a main to date in the Hall Dairy Farm Fast Power Rocket Sassy. Row number three on the inside in the Donnie Shop Room 15. It's your 2019 World of Outlaws Late Model Series champion out of New Berlin, Illinois. It's Brandon Shepard. And on his outside, the driver out of Charlotte, Pennsylvania in the 51. It is William Style, your final two starters. One of the fastest drivers in hot laps low early on, early on this evening in the six hours. Robbie Stewart in your final starter. We the Illinois driver of the 13, that is Brayton Laster. What a way to start the late model portion of the Gateway Dirt Nationals. Eight cars, eight laps, top three move on. How many fast Freddy Carpenter fans are in the house tonight? How many people want to see Bloom Chris win this one? How about it for Bobby Pierce fans? Who wants to see fans over us continue to kick butt in the dome? I'll tell you what, man. And then you got a Brandon Shepard, a guy that only won 26-something races this year in the World of Outlaws title. He's starting fifth, Dustin. It's unbelievable and, and uh, legitimate. You take nothing away from those other guys, but any one of those top five drivers could win this race. And if you're Freddie Carpenter right now, man, you're worth thinking, man, if I can get the whole shot on that zero car, I've only got to keep 400 drivers behind the beat for the eight laps. That's it. I mean, you know, no, no difficult task. But I know it would mean the world to him as it would any of these guys to get a win in this heat race with the competition that we have in this one is you've got uh, guys out there that have started every race. We've actually got every previous Gateway Dirt Nationals winner in this heat race, in this one heat race with Bobby Pierce and Scott Lundquist. Those stats coming at you. Look at that. The lights are up. Dustin, it's time to get this underway. It is go time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Again, eight laps is the distance. Top three, the top three advance to tonight's first preliminary feature. Freddie Carpenter on the pole. Scott Lundquist on the outside. The light is off. Freddie's like, what? Freddie's <laughs> wrong with that start. Said, that, was, that was a great start. Hey, I can't blame Freddie Carpenter for wanting to get a good start down in turns three and four, but I believe he may have fired just a little too soon. You see the two orange cones on the inside of the racetrack coming off turn number four? You see the Sunoco banners on the outside of turn number four? That is the Sunoco starting zone. Drivers are told the pre-race drivers meeting that uh, they are to start in that general area in the Sunoco starting zone. So we will give them one more opportunity. Freddie Cooper on the pole. Scott, oh, Scott, oh, Scott, oh, Scott. Bit of a jump that time. I think Kelly Carlton just put both these guys on the naughty list after that. Maybe they might have, I don't know. But uh, so the K car got the jump the first time, the zero got the jump the second time, and I'm gonna guess that nobody from the front row is gonna jump again because I'm, I'm guessing if they do, we might see them move back a row. If that's Brayton Laster, I'd take off right now. I'll just see if you can get with this. <laughs> no, we got the move, he's already at the bottom, right? Yeah, why not? Here we go. Carpenter on the pole, Bloomquist on the outside, and Austin at the goal. Oh, 
the smoke. Oh, man. It looks like John Force on the back straightaway. A lot of smoke coming out of that race car. And they're going to look under the hood of that Team Zero race car pulling off the hood. And you see the smoke coming out. William Style had to spin to avoid a slowing Scott Bloomquist. And man, what a tough way to start. This was a much anticipated heat race number one. And just like that, the Dartway Model Hall of Famer sits in the infield with a plume of smoke coming out of that race car. Blake Anderson, talk about drama to start the night in super late model heat race action. Four times the charm on the start there, and then Scott Bloomquist goes into turn number one and no one's home. And a tough break for Scott. The back end of the car tore up a little bit. It's Really had nowhere to go on the high side of the racetrack, and certainly a dejected Scott Bloomquist sitting inside the zero, because this is an event, guys, that he has had some success at, especially if you look back to the inaugural Arizona Sports Shirts Gateway Dirt Nationals presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Yeah, we're just checking out the FK Rod Ends instant replay, and there you saw Scott Bloomquist zero car going up in smoke. At the start of the race, Trenton Berry, uh, a lot of drama to start this first heat race. Yep, and the guy sitting beside me said, ah, uh, something broke. So uh, Terry Phillips joins us here out of Springfield, Missouri. We can uh, refer to you as, uh, as Hall of Famer once this season gets wrapped up, man. A pretty cool honor for you coming up later this summer. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, the Ozark area Hall of Famer around home called me and then told my wife I must be getting old and two days later the, the the Hall of Fame called me you know so I, I guess I, I'm really getting old but uh, no it's an honor to get put in there for sure you know being there with my dad and and uh, a lot of my heroes. Man I know I know you love coming to this race you love coming to St. Louis uh, but it's just kind of bucket list stuff for you here that's something you just can't miss right come December? Yeah uh, we got the whole family here everybody enjoys coming coming to this and and watch it. Put together a pretty good 2019 season. I don't know what win for you stuck out. I, I especially think that race where you tracked down the leaders at Cedar Lake and won up there at the Masters weekend probably sticks out in, in my mind as maybe your top performance of the year. What says you? Uh, that was a good one. You know, I haven't I haven't been to Cedar Lake much in a year. I used to go there when I was younger, but um, yeah, that was a that was a good race for us, and uh, that kind of turned our season around a little bit too. You know, we. We very tall I still want to play the drinking game back. Yeah, if you're at home, you know what you're supposed to do. Wait, does that mean I get to also? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> at this point, why not? All right, here we go. Field has been reshuffled. Outside row moves up, so it's now fast. Freddie Cotton on the pole. Chad Zobrist on the outside. Bobby Pearson, William Style in row two. Eight laps the distance. Two, three. Naughty list, naughty list, so Zobris jumps, he gets the naughty list, and Freddy feeds him a big old right wrist. <laughs> but Anderson, you gotta get these guys under control, they're feeling feisty in the door. Oh, look at the naughty stick Kyle shaking at him too. Uh-oh. Hey, look at that, are we new front row? Oh, oh boy. I don't, I, I Man, don't, I uh, don't, uh, look, look out, Brayton Rasters, there's a storm coming your <laughs> way. <laughs> Blake, what is happening right now? I have no idea what's happening right now, I know that... That was a while, that's for sure. I'm hoping we can get an FK Rod Ends replay on that. I'm sure I ain't asking you shall receive. That's just, yeah. All right, here we go. We'll try it again. Six cars, eight laps, top three transfer to one of Wright's preliminary features. That is a much better story. Freddie Cotton, Eddie Eddie, 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 Flag is out. Debris on the back stretch, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drive shaft. Yeah, yeah. Drive shaft. Those cars do not go near as fast when they don't have the drive shaft. And what a heartbreak wow. for fast Freddy as his roll has been slowed. We've lost drive shafts. We've lost massive amounts of oil. We've got sheet metal. We've torn a banner. And all of a sudden, a couple of these guys like Robbie Stewart and, and William Stiles, who thought they had no shot, maybe at making tonight's A may now find themselves in position if they can just get by one of the three cars in front. Thank you. 
from and William Style fifth. So third spot goes to the 15 of Brandon Shepard. Second goes to the 32 of Bobby Pierce. And the winner of heat race number one in the Hawks Dairy Farm, Metal Era. Window Farm sponsored, number 78. We're about it though for Highland, Illinois' Tad Sobrez. Well, what a Manhattan, Illinois. It's going to be opening Mike Spatola, the Big Daddy Scrap Rocket XR1, to his outside of the number 83 out of Bright, Indiana. It's the Silver Shark, Scott James. One winner on the F, the driver of the Wagon Construction Rocket Chassis Quarant Racing Engine number 83. Starting instead of row number two with car 4E, it's Scott Geisha, one of Collinsville, Illinois, the Bob Pierce Race Car, St. Louis Carpenters District Council, Bull Masters Racing Engine entry into his outside. The number 84, the Renegade Race Fuels, Rock Island Lubricants, Barry Ride Chassis with a Pro Power Racing Engine, Miles Moose from Lincoln, Illinois. Row number three coming to us out of St. Charles, Missouri, with Trevor Gundy, Craig Miller Family Chapels, Bob Pierce Race Car, car number 11T, two wins this year for him, and starting to his outside of the M. C20. That'll be Bobby McGee out of Drummond, Oklahoma. And on the back row, Adam Schrag out of Hutchinson, Kansas. Eight laps the distance, seven cars. Top three move off to the main event. It's going to be Mike Spatola, Scott G. Danfield West, or double him up. Blake Anderson, what did Bobby Pierce redraw? Bobby Pierce finding a nine, a nine for Bobby Pierce. Uh, a little too deep. And 84 miles moves, slight contact, nothing major. Lights are out on the speedway. Gishar tags the back of the pack, and now Trevor Gundaker moves up to the inside of row number two, alongside of Miles Moose. It's going to be Mike Spatola, Scott James, open in the circle, the front row. instant replay as you see Gundaker, McGeehee battle for position and McGeehee had a good run across the bottom and boom he and Gundaker go for the same piece, piece of real estate and now we get the <laughs> we get part of Giesel's car out of the front stretch well there's a lot happening here Dustin there's a lot there's a lot going on right now as uh, yeah the entire right rear quarter panel and uh, maybe even a little bit of uh, the decking coming off of that as well what do you got Blake Anderson it was literally stuck in the fence. I, I thought mean, you might have got it when the field was on the back straightaway. I thought you could have got it. Yeah, I tried. I, I hustled over there, but <laughs> just couldn't quite get it. I don't have Eric's golf cart. That's my problem. Oh, it's Royal's fault. Yeah, I blame, blame Eric. He's probably hiding it for me because he ate all of his <laughs> cake. Yeah, I, I saw Eric earlier. He said he was going to start hiding all of his food from Blake now that he knew where it was. He's got Jolly Ranchers tonight. Ah, no bad breath for that team down there tonight. I like it. <laughs> no cotton candy, though, Ben. Tracy Clay is here. She didn't bring you cotton candy. She should go on the naughty list. Tracy Clay, best cotton candy in racing. <laughs> I-30 Speedway. All right, we're going to set to go back green. Two down, six to go. Mike Spatola leads the way over Scott James and Miles Moose. Top three to the future, six laps to sort it out. We're back underway. It's in the second spot, and losing that third and final transfer spot.
in the shark will slow right before they get to the white flag. We're going to have a two-lap shootout to the checkers. We're going to have a two-lap shootout to the checkers. And I tell you what, Spatola and right now James are hustling that top side up like it is nobody's business, Dustin. Yeah, they sure are. They're moving up the track a little more, a little more. Here's a look at the FK Rod Ends instant replay. And look, geese. Oh, oh, hang on, camera. Why, hello, Trevor Gunn. Camera hugs for Trevor just shakes his head. It was funny, I raced go-karts with Trevor Gunnaker a few years ago, and he was sitting in that same exact position. I was coming at him. I was not nearly as nice as what the leader said. Yeah. I bored him. Yeah, I, I got him pretty good, actually. Blake, he's hitting a guy that is parked on the racetrack. I mean, I think that says volumes about where Dustin is on the Christmas list this year. Yeah, absolutely. Who well, does that? I mean, who does that? You know, whichever one of you gets me a Segway will be high on the Christmas list. You're not getting a Segway, Blake. We've already told you. We're pulling this year. There's been a lot of rain outs. We're getting a Segway. 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 The box that a Segway came in, and you can look at it and tell everybody that we bought you a Segway and somebody stole it. You can play with the box. That's what a lot of kids do anyway, right? They play with the box, throw it on the toy. Trevor Gundaker, he's going to try to keep going. Look at him. That moves this boy, T-Rex. It's auspicious at best right now. That's set up. Oh, auspicious. It's Very auspicious, good. yes. Well, the Silver Star is trying to get away around Mike Spatola in the 89 car. We're looking for Mike Spatola. He's going to join us at the Wild West Shootout coming up in January at FK Riding's Arizona Speedway. Can't wait to have Opie back out there. And I believe that his cousin, Frank Hecker, yes. here. He's going to join the party as well. Be two nice additions to the program. Yeah, January 11th through 19th. That's, that's when you and I, we kick off our 2020 season. Yeah, one in three weeks. I said two weeks last night, but it's three. I, I, I forgot that extra week in there. Don't take my week away from me, bro. Are so, you all right? Well, I'm here. You're I'm having, 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 having issues. What is what's what's going on up here? I'm having more issues than normal. All right. The lights are out on the speedway. Mike Spatola has led the whole way so far. He has not had any issues. And he's going to bring us back to the green. Two laps to sort it out. Miles Moose on the hot seat. That third and final transfer. We're back in the rain. He race number two. And Gisel, it might need a roll back now. He has got all kinds of issues. He's actually on top of the wall. He did not know that they took his right rear quarter panel off the wall right there. And he was just going to take a high top. Yeah. Hey, Blake, remember earlier when Dustin said that Scott Gisel had a great Thursday night and he was one to watch tonight? He announced your jinx of the night. That's not, I did not say that. That did, that did not happen. Nope. Blame DJ. Nope. Okay, right into the red ball. Let's see what happened. Yeah, he got a comes off four and... Did he hit? I don't... What happened I, there? I... 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 I much respect, James Essex. I... I... I, I, I don't know if we got together with Gundaker from that angle. Do we... Turn, do we have it from another angle? Does the Hall of Famer Steve Giggis have it from the French? Catch the future Hall of Famer Gilly Hansen. Yeah, she get it? The future. No, she's uh, shaking her head no. Uh, all right, boy. We're going to throw it down to you, buddy. Yeah, we're just waiting to see what's going on. We got crew members climbing on the car, Scott. He, he's staying in the car with the helmet on right now, guys, but boy, this is a, a tore up car that's found the turn four fence a couple of times. He and Gordy, or he had, excuse me, Trevor Gundaker have been having a great battle. They've been leaning on each other quite a bit, though, using the fenders. Well, Blake, why don't you get down there and help him? You're just standing and watching. I'm, I'm a good, we established this earlier. I'm a good superhero. Oh, here we go. Look at this. We got another angle. Let's see. We have a better idea of what happened. Maybe. Nope, yep, the car just turned on him. Yeah, that was, uh, there was no contact. That's what we were wondering, if there was contact between he and, and Trevor Gundaker. And we saw from that angle there was no contact between the two. Been leading this thing for 30 minutes. Oh, boy. Oh. It's funny, you're getting texts from your wife about what they're drinking and what they're eating, and, and mine is just, I haven't heard a word. And meanwhile, Roger Slack has now put us in a group text. That worries me, and he's, oh, he's angry with it. He's angry with Blake. <laughs> All right, please go ahead into that chat here in a second. All right, Mike Spatola brings us back to the green. Two laps to go. We're back in the way in heat two.
making their third and final transfer in car number 84. That's going to be Miles Moose out of Lincoln, Illinois, in the second spot out of Bright, Indiana, the Silver Shark, Scott James in the 83, and your winner coming to us from Manhattan, Illinois, the Rocket XR1, Custom Race Engines, Big Daddy Scrap, TJ's Mechanical, B&D Chemical, Illinois State Rifle Association, Steve's Performance, number 89, it's OP Mike Spatola. He about to make its way out onto the speedway. And here is your lineup, starting on the pole, setting the pace and bringing them right out of Batesville, Arkansas, and the 21 is going to be Mr. Smooth Billy Moyer in the MS Car Creek with Sea Valley Transport. Henderson, Pro Power Capital, number 21 on the outside of him, out of Big Iowa. In the 58, it's Jeremiah Hurst. Hurst wheels into the dome. We're going to climb this power black box, sponsored by one of those custom software. The Dish Network, powered by Doug Wright Satellite and Nest Pro. Rowling, number two on the inside of Washington, Illinois, the Pink Panther, Bob Gardner, 14 on the outside of him. Isaac Illinois, Brandon Crowley in the 56. Their brother on the inside, Metamora, Ohio's Brett Miller in the 10. And Robert Audrey out of Laverne, Tennessee in the 127. Your final starter is going to be the Hammerman, Mike Hammerly out of St. Charles, Missouri. Seven cars, six miles. officially be scored third, I think, when he crosses the line. You know, the first year, Billy Moyer did not make it to this race. He had strep throat. He got strep the week of the event, did not get to come. The second year, it took a little time to figure it out. Last year, he was a contender for the win, and Mr. Smooth, he was going after win number 841 here tonight, Dustin. He's got that capital of number 21 rolling on the high side of the speedway. Man, he looks really good. Here's a look at the FK Rod Ends instant replay and exactly what happened to Robert Ardry as right there in that left rear just came off of the car and decided it was going to make a lap on its own. Yeah, look at Moyer. He looked at it up and he said, no, nah, yeah, I'm going to leave you alone, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in your lane, bro. You know, Billy Moyer running a very interesting line. And Blake, I don't, have you noticed in the infield this line, Moyer is running. He enters high in the corner and then diamonds off. Have you seen anybody else doing that so far? Uh, it's the first car, at least, that's had success doing it, that's for sure. And we saw that line last night come into play late in the game. Much earlier tonight, though. Well, and one thing I noticed, too, though, it almost came back to bite him because he got almost too high down here uh, going into one. So turned off. Green flag is going to wave this time. Billy Moyer, Jeremiah Hurst, Vaughn in their top three cars with two laps to go. Transfer spot the 4G of Bob Miller, finishing in second, the 58 of Jeremiah Hurst, and picking up the win in the Messiah Valley Transport, Carl Chevrolet, Carl Quest Pro, Power Capital, number 21 out of Batesville, Arkansas, and here you have Mr. Smooth, Billy Moyer. 
And Blake, he's about to redraw with you. He is, we'll let him get his helmet off down here. Boy, if he could add another win to the total and one of the most impressive win totals in it. Race English out of Bent, Kentucky. The Rocket XR1, J. Dickens Power, JDS Poultry Entry into his outside, the number 28. The Kryptonite Kid, Tyler Carpenter out of Parkersburg, West Virginia. The Eisner Racing Engine, Kryptonite Chassis, Box Seat Productions, number 28. Inside of row number two, the 32 has been qualifying effort for this driver. It's Derek Fetter out of Troy, Missouri. Into his outside, the number five of Michael Jacoba out of Highland, Illinois. The Buzzer Machine Power Rocket Chassis, sponsored by Jacoba Automotive. Starting inside of row number three, we the number 44 of Matt Shipley out of Weston, Ohio. Into his outside. Jason Zobrist out of Highland, Illinois. His brother's already in the show. And on the back, it's Brandon Tabardi out of Alamo, Kentucky in the 16T. In race four, eight laps the distance. Top three to the feature. Green something. Here we go. It's all over the side. As he takes him off into one and two. Flies as Tabaldi gets together with Jason Zobrist up in turn number two, and that will draw the caution. So we'll get them sorted out here. Two laps to go. Again. He has had some bad luck at upside down here a couple years ago. He's right now just one car out. Ben going to try to make his way into the show as two laps are complete, six laps remain. All right, two on the board, six to go, and that's up to Tyler Carpenter to mash that loud pedal out of turn at number four. Green flags up. We're back underway. not so good to bad to really bad. He you jinxed him. I did jinx him. You talked about him. I did, I did not put the, he's not on top of the wall like your boy Gisha was <laughs> earlier, but he, I did put a jinx on him. And we have FK Riding's instant replay. And West Virginia's Tyler Carpenter, he was my, my pick this weekend as a dark horse, a guy that could leave here with $30,000 as we go green out of turn at number four. And back in the way. truck, door slam, it's coming. And now watch, he hit right there, the boom. All right, the bad news is he broke. The good news is that was where he got in trouble before on that back straight. That's where it went really bad for Fetter. Hey, that man, he had a hot rod. He, he went to a transfer, he goes to the back of the back, he goes back to a transfer, and then the car breaks. Well, the good news is this is the fourth late model heat race of the night. We've only got 22 more races to go out. That's how fantastic at home, you know, that things just run bad for you. We're good, it's Friday evening, so that's right. That's right. All right, well, we're getting them sorted out. We hope everybody's having a good time. We're having a good time. We're in the dome. It's five days before Christmas. It's cold outside. And we got race cars. We're doing a show. I was thinking, baby, it's cold outside. Uh, 
that that could be a song tonight. It could be. All right, six down, two to go. Tyler Carpenter, your leader here. And he race number four. Green flags up. We're back in the way. Positions mean everything, man. I didn't come here to fuck around. I come here to place a statement, put kryptonite race cars on the map. I didn't say I didn't say you can't race me clean. I said that was my goal to run you clean. So here he's already chiming in. He ain't even sure what was said. I ain't got a problem with Tanner, man. I told my guys back there, whatever it takes to win this day, I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna do it by roughing him up. It's gonna determine the first lap. So uh all you running up the keyboard warriors, beat the buttons, baby. I, I took him off. Woo! Emotions running high. Tyler Carpenter can hear you. Oh, I, can, I will say one thing. I can't be here without all my sponsors. And Kryptonite Eyes, or uh, Kirk Eyes at Race Engines. And I got a niece of mine back home that needs some major prayers, man. We ain't the type to reach out and beg for help, but we need help for her. Her name's Manning. She's just a little baby, and it's uh, going to be a miracle to be able to make it happen, but we're looking for a bunch of money for the next medical thing happens. Tonight with hope that he finds the three. Tyler Carpenter outside or inside a room of a world of one ten English show here. Remaining. We'll see if that lap was fully scored or not. But Rusty Griffaw getting one for the hometown crowd here. As the 
fastest Missouri driver looking solid, really as solid as we've seen anyone up front so far, man. He actually had a 2.3 second advantage over David Fevers until that caution flag came out. Uh, hey, there's a reason. He's a former Bell Clare Speedway track champion. He likes these little tracks. Now, so he will rejoin the field at the tail. The caution lights have been turned off. The green flag's going to wave this time. If you're just tuning in, we are six laps in, two laps remaining to heat race number five for the Super Late Model Swift Virtue Motors entry into his outside, the number 25 of the high side hustler, Jason Fager, out of Bloomington, Illinois, the Indy Customs Pro Powers, Casey's Roofing Race Car, going to be Billy Green out of Walton, Kentucky in the 49, Jude Jason Welsh out of Maryville, Tennessee in the 29, and Maria Hankins out of Bennett, Colorado in the 63, we're in the way for him. Caution comes out as that is not what they wanted to see. But Mike Flyer wanted to see it though. Yeah, absolutely wanted to see it. And as we get set to get this one back underway, lights are up. On to Colonel Ellis. Yeah. Yeah. with the concrete and now he finds himself on his lid 
and New Florida will have only had seven cars in it, Dustin, but there was action all over the speedway, and right now we're going to go over and check on Buddy Isles and make sure the North Carolina driver is okay at the top of turns one and two. And he got that car just a little too high and up on his leg. You actually see where he ripped part of the banners down. He thought, well, I saw Billy Moyer do it, so I thought I'd do it too. So they're up there going to check on Isles, the North Carolina driver. Tough break, man. First time to the down. He was fast. He was fast. He was fast, yeah. And he is out of the car, guys. Calling out, Buddy Isles. Well, Blake, we'll let you get a word down there with Buddy. Man, tough break for the driver out of the North Carolina. Can't tell you, Vance Wilson, great motor in the car. Oh, here at 12. Right back to the Johnny goes, my bad for a point, eh? Exactly what he had to do to get into that feature. And we'll walk over here and uh, let Buddy kind of get acclimated here. He's, he's walking around talking with safety crew. He's going to sit down in the golf cart. And again, Buddy, a tough break, but we're putting, up a, on a, putting on a show on the right side of the racetrack. Yes. It was rough, I mean, just hold on, do what you get, you know, you can't what you can do about that. Um, thanks for all my help, and I don't know if we're going to make it back out tonight, we'll try, though. Great to see you call the crowd A-OK. -okay. Thank you. Buddy Arms OK, and they're going to flip over his car. Uh, obviously, a little bit dejected, but we could have had a little bit of a smile on his face, and it looked like he was having some fun there for a moment. Yeah, that was a tough one. They own their own family business, Buddy Isles Tire and Automotive, and uh, works there with his dad, I do believe. One win on the year, came at Halifax Motor Speedway, the I-95 series. And the only CSB consulting chassis in the house, a performance race engine, and they're going to try to lay that chassis over as easy as they can. Blake, uh, how much damage to the fence down there? Just talking with Matt Curl, and we're going to have some fence repair. They've got to take out a couple of panels here in the fencing and take out a pole as well and fix a couple of clips. So it'll be just a little bit down here in turns one and two as they work on the fence. They're already moving around underneath the grandstands to get this fixed. All right, well, the, uh, the bad news is going to be a little bit of uh, fence repair, but the good news is they can use this time to maybe work on a couple places on the racetrack if they want to, do an air quality control break as well. We'll allow them to do that and... Uh, and give you an opportunity to get up here in the dome. I believe Mike Fryer, I don't know if he's raced here before or not, but that car has been here, but I can't remember if Mike's been here before. Ryan Unziker has been here since the dome started, and he's trying to race his way in and pick up another win. It's been a good year for Ryan Unziker in car at number 24. As right there, we're finally going back green, and Ryan Unziker leading the way with three laps to go. Final heat race for the first half of the Super Late Model. They'll creep off into turns three and four to make their way back to the green flag. And green is out. And we're back in the way.
Finishing in third, it's the J8 of Jaden Frame. Finishing in second, the 99 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. And the winner of Hank Race number seven. And the picture of Kellen, Don Lee Trucky, Nolan Parrick Rocket Cassie, and a Mariqua Eleanor Whitting High again, the Mariqua Muscle Stephen Bob. And Sean is in. Sean, winning. Don't worry about you guys. Seven is up. 25 W, 10 number 20, Jordan Bell, 400, Tennessee in the 27, his outside the 2 C of Joey Coulter, the Florida native, and car number 2 C. And on the back row, Mike Apple out of Holt, Holton, Michigan, and car number 99, White Shadow of the Speedway. He raced 8 of 12 for the North Florida Super Ray Models. Top three, move off the feature. Number two, winner, red dress for positions one through six. It's a third and right. It's going to be side by side on the floor. Green flag, and right away. And we're going to be four and four. We're going to be 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 as he gets into the fence in car number 99, they were four wide at the back of the pack, entering the corner, and you knew that was not going to be good. And what else is not good is he has obliterated one of those poles down there in turn number one in car number 99. So we're going to have to get that car removed from the fence and evaluate what's going to have to be our course of action on repairing the fence as we try to get heat race number eight underway for the Super Heat models. Eight of 12. This was the second heat for the second feature. Here tonight, Blake Anderson will throw down to you. Great to be the bearer of bad news. Look at the winner's heat race. And we've got Ray Drew with Blake, but he's got eight laps to sit here on the same place to keep behind him. He's way down the lane. That's number four. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's Trying to turn and it will not turn. Yeah, 
was trying to get down there and drive her normally a great lead model racer. He runs a lot in Mississippi and Louisiana. He's got a handful of wins this year. Looks like they're going to great lead racer start. Patrick Davis, the winner this year, Kip Hughes. Double digits of winners on the year now. course of the last couple of years or so. So it'll be a complete restart, side-by-side, double file, two-by-two. We'll see if we can get Michael Santangelo back into the pit area. Blake? Hey, guys, Kip Hughes is a, a guy that runs a multitude of race cars. We'll see him run in a midget in a couple of weeks at the Chili Bowl. And he doesn't just run that. He runs a racetrack, too. I believe he operates Enid Speedway as well, Blake. So a little bit of everything for Kip Hughes. And he told me he actually borrowed that race car to come here this weekend. Well, that's a, fa that's a fast race car. So, yeah. So we'll get this yeah. one. Do you have a race car I can borrow? Man, Blake borrows stuff. What I is going wouldn't on get me here. a Segway, so I thought a race car maybe. Right, that seems very natural, Blake. Yeah, who, I thought. Who's the, who got this car? In row number three. Once again, the top three, the top three drivers out of this race will advance into the second late model preliminary feature a little bit later on tonight. We still got one, two, three more late model heat races to go here this evening. As those drivers start making their way in, the next heat race, I'm looking forward to this next one, Benji. Out of Bell Valley, Ohio, the Bell Valley Terror, Kevin Smith will be on the pole with East Prairie, Missouri, Scott Bell on the outside. Who had that in their dirt draft? Well, if, if there's not a, you know, if he doesn't, if uh, Kevin doesn't have a shirt, I feel like we need one. When you got the Bell Valley Terror, you got to put right. that on a t-shirt. That's right, that's exactly right. Somebody could give Grandpa one since he lost Grandma. I'll give him a Bell Valley <laughs> Kevin Smith t-shirt in the house. Well, again, Patrick Daniel wins the, de the Pit Area Decoration Award for the weekend. Yes. He has a Christmas tree on top of his stacker hauler and presents representing all of his sponsors under it. Great product placement in the Pit Area for that team. Yeah, no doubt about that. I also saw a Christmas-like spread of food at one of the tables back there behind the Pit Area as well. Here we go. Patrick Daniel on the pole. Kip Hughes on the outside, and we are underway. Patrick Daniel gets a good start, jumps out in the early race lead, Kip Hughes second, Jason Wagner in third. And that's how they're going to be at the end of lap number one, Kip Hughes running the bottom, Patrick Daniel pulling way up on the top side, and right now Jason Wagner is trying to hang on to that third and final transfer spot, side by side behind of him, Jeff Herzog in the 11, in the fourth spot, trying to take that spot away from Levi side of the speedway. Three laps down. Five laps remaining. This time by cross bikes being shown to the field. Four down, four to go. Patrick Daniel pulling away from Kip Hughes. Second place, Kip Hughes pulling away from that battle. Jason Wagner, Levi Ashby, and Jeff Herzog. Herzog in the 11. Ashby in the 1. And Wagner in the 12. That's three cars battling for one transfer spot. Again, Patrick Daniel stays out front, Kip Hughes stays in second. We stay glued to this battle for the final transfer spot with two to go. Two laps remaining for the race leader, Patrick Daniel. And Jason Wagner is staying just far enough ahead of that battle right there to maintain that third and final transfer spot. Meanwhile, White Flags out final time around, Patrick Daniel working through the back of the field. He clears Matt Cook and comes off turn number two. What a race lead. He has checkered flag is out, and the Point Texas driver, Patrick Daniel, number nine. Kip Hughes finishes second and third is going to go to the J-12 with Jason Wagner with Levi Ashby and Jeff Herzog. So third spot is going to go to Jason Wagner. Patty, Ohio and starting to his outside the 27S and Mike Schulte out of Summerfield, Illinois and on the back row the 91 car coming to us out of Muscatine, Iowa. It's Michael Goldenfing. Five wins on the year for that driver. Norman IMCA late model competitor. He's going to start seventh on the grid in heat race number 10. So counting this, we have three late model heats left, and then we're going to have a pair of midget heat races. That's the next set of races on the docket. 
And then we're going to see main action for the late models, B main to the late models features for the midgets, the late models, and then the modifieds can wake up from their long winter's nap and they'll be ready for their program here tonight. A really cool thing about the driver on the pole of this one, Kevin Smith, if you get an opportunity to go back there and check out his trailer in the pit area, that started at one point, he bought that and it was nothing more than basically a flatbed trailer. And he spent two years, he and his son, putting this trailer together and it is absolutely one of the most immaculate trailers back there in the pit area. They did all the work themselves without, with virtually any outside help and again they spent a lot of time going in and that is just a testament to Kevin Smith and the craftsmanship man. It is a very, very sharp looking trailer. If you get an opportunity, he's got it back there in the pit area. Go and check it out. They have a Christmas tree on it, does There's they? no Christmas oh, tree. Oh, so close. All right, lights are going down on the speedway. Heat race number 10, again, eight laps the distance top, excuse me, eight laps the distance top three, move on to the feature. And we're gonna turn the yellow light back on, something they did not like that they saw. They're getting ready to come to the green flag and looks like we're gonna roll them around at least one more time. And indeed we will one more time around the speedway. Ohio and Missouri on row one. Row two is Indiana and Ohio, Rusty Schlink in that brand new domination race car. And again, he had another big year. So he took the C.J. Rayburn, he made some changes he wanted on it, and now he's created the number 91 Domination Race Car Dust as we get set to come to the green. We're gonna have him even and straight. Kevin Smith, Scott Bell, looking good so far. Indeed we are, green flag, we're underway. Side by side, off into one and two. Kevin Smith and Bell, look out, Dwyer Chamberlain trying to move on the box. Schwank might get them all. He goes from fourth to second off into turns three and four. Kevin Smith, you're there. Oh, look out, insane Dwayne as he and Schwank get together and we have got a pile up down in turn at number four. Pile up down in turn at number four as the 91 car of Schlink and Insane Dwayne, the wrong place at the wrong time. He's going to get Scott Bell down there, Brian Mullins, and the 91 of Michael Goldenfinning. Wow, that's a tough one, man, because Dwayne had a good move on that first lap. Schlink did too, going after it, and just uh, we got a parking lot at the bottom of turn number four now. That is, there's a lot of damage in those four race cars right there. And I am, at this point, I am not convinced that any of them will be able to continue. Are you calling your shot? You're saying there's not a chance. Babe Ruth of announcing up there. Okay. Is, you know, I, I, I don't think that's exactly <laughs> what was. No. Blake, we're going to throw it down to you, buddy. You're on the scene. What do you see? Yeah, yeah parking lot. Cars parked on top of cars. And I think, so much I hate to say it, Ben, I think DJ is probably right. Ooh. Going to be no living with him now. No living with I him. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't like to brag. Matt Curl right down here thing. directing traffic as Dwayne Chamberlain elevated right now to say the least, so I think they're gonna handle that first, get the 20 car back on the ground. We're gonna take a look at the FK Rod Ends instant replay and see exactly what happened there. And you were right, Ben, Chamberlain made what was gonna be a nice move, and he just got into the back of Schlink, and it was just, it was just one of those yeah, things. Yeah, same piece I mean, of real estate. Wow, tough break there. Well, we'll get them separated down there, and um, there's no damage to the catch fence, DJ. I'm going to throw that out well, there. That's no, good. That's a positive. No damage to the catch fence. I can't confirm that. I wasn't. I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. I was hoping that you weren't going to have an opportunity to play Dominic the Irish Donkey, whatever that song now, was. there's. I'm definitely proof. Third, top three transfer. You're still third. I don't care if you're, you're still third, third, right? I mean. All right, well, the, the driver that's the beneficiary of all this is Rusty Schlenk. I mean, Schlenk was uh, starting this race fourth on the initial start. He's now going to be in the outside front row of the only row, the three cars remaining in this heat race. He has options. That's what you're telling me. He's got, yes, right. yes. Kevin Smith, on the other hand, who got a great start and was coming around to lead the first lap of that race, is sitting in his car right now saying, son of a gun. In one sense, in another sense, I'm sure he's happy to know that he's going to transfer into one of those preliminary features right. too. He might, he might be starting alongside Patrick Daniel in the feature if he can get up there and get into this redraw. So Kevin Smith and the 91 car on the front row of Rusty Schlink and right behind them, Mike Schulte as the lights go out on the speedway. All three of these cars will move on as now they're just battling for a spot in that redraw, whether they redraw one through six or seven through 12. For feature number two here tonight, this will be an easy one to edit for the Dirt on Dirt On Demand staff as we come green out of turn number four, and we are underway. And Schlenkel power in the lead. Kevin Smith falls back to the second spot. Schulte in the third position. Little Will hopping through turns three and four as we've got one lap on the board. Three cars remain, and right now it's a glorified hot lap session for these three drivers. 
as they will each one move off to one of those prelim features here tonight, the second prelim feature to be exact. As they're trying to figure out where their car is best around this fifth mile brewery inside the Dome at America Center from Rusty Schlink leading away in car number 91. And Schultz is going to pull to the infield, Dustin. He's going to pull to the infield. Will he transfer? That's the question. Uh, oh, my. And they've cut this one. They've cut it to, th to six laps because they were afraid nobody would be left. They cut it to six laps as they're going to see the white flag. Looks like going to turn four. Can Rusty Schlink keep it rolling? Kevin, Kevin Smith stay on the racetrack. Well, Schlink had trouble for a minute. If they don't finish, I'm leaving the announcer's booth because they're going to come looking for me. Off into turns one and two. Rusty Schlink leads the way. Kevin Smith back in second. A merciful checkered flag will fly out of turn at number four, and Rusty Schlink wins heat race number 10. Kevin Smith comes home in second, and your third place finisher in a six lap race is four laps down. Your third and final transfer. Hey, man, why, why risk messing your stuff up? If you're Schulte, you're in the show, so. The 27 car, four laps. No drip and a Superman on the front row. Your pole sitter out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota in the 76 will be Snow Drift. Blair Nodorf on the outside of him. Now a three-time Lucas Oil Elite Final Dirt Series champion out of Blairsville, Georgia. The 49 is Superman Jonathan Davenport. Row two, it's going to be Chris Osborne in the 61, Mike Glasscock in the 30, The Quiet Riot, Jeff Curl in the 12, Mark Shipman in the 57. T D22, green flags out, we're underway. Davenport drops back down to the inside. Blair Nodor leads lap number one. Blair Nodor, the rapidly improving young driver out of Sioux Falls. Up there, we're going to fight Glass going to the battle up front as well. Don't sleep on the Royal Illinois driver of the 30 car. He's trying to look down to the inside right now. Snowdrift they able to keep Superman at bay. Davenport going to drive it down to the inside. Nodor. Finishing in third is the 30 of Mike Glasscock, second to the 49 of Jonathan Davenport, and your winner out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, in the Bargain Barn Tire Center, Bargain Barn Motorsports, outcast powered black diamond chassis. Let him hear you, ladies and gentlemen. It's Snowdrift, Blair Nodorf. Man, Blair takes the helmet off. How about that holding off, JD? Holy crap, it was rough. <laughs> about about killed myself a couple times there, run, about nailed the wall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, blew it over. We'll let him draw here. Big smile on his face as he held off Jonathan Davenport, and he finds a three, the three for Blair Nodor. And we'll roll over and see what Jonathan Davenport finds here. JB tried, he got half the spoiler. He put on a show, that was fun to watch. Man finds a seven, the seven for Jonathan Davenport. Well, Davenport pulled the best point. C7K coming to us out of Pleasant Plains, Illinois. It's Greg Kimmons in the Bob Pierce race car, Pro Power Racing Engine, Irwin and Dunbar trans transmission entry. The 2019 Big Ten Late Model Series champion is Greg Kimmons in car 27. And to his outside, 
all the way from Casper, Wyoming. It's Jason Shearcoat in the GRT race car, custom racing engine, Showtime Industries, car number 12 and S. He's a two-time Lasota limited late model national champion. And starting at the back of the pack in the 22 star out of Oakdale, Louisiana, it's Derek Perkins in the Benz Auto Restoration Track Star race car with a PTS racing engine. As the lights are down on the speedway, final late model heat of the evening. Two, two midget heats coming your way next. And it's Peyton Rooney, Gordy Gundaker, a couple of Missouri hot shoes on the front row of this one, trying to move off to that redraw. Or I believe the outside front row still might be available. Looking for the green flag out of four, even and straight, beating and banging, and we're away. Hang on to it, Gordy. As Gordy Gundaker in the throttle, as is the 15 of Rooney. Rooney will drive away down the back straightaway. Henderson up to second. Meanwhile, Gundaker falls back to third. Now Gundaker to the inside of Henderson. Three wide to the second spot. This kick it up. Henderson wisely lets out of the gas. Gundaker back into the second spot. Up on two rows. Reuter back to right there behind him. Meanwhile, Henderson slips up the banking out of turn number two. He'll fall back in the battle with Kimmins for the fourth spot. Out front, it is all 15 of Peyton Rooney. Peyton Rooney with a straightaway advantage over Gordy Gundaker. Gundaker's had his car on the right two rows for much of the race. In the third spot now, it is Paul Warner, but here comes Matt Henderson, the Tennessee racer, getting his feet back under him, trying to get back into a transfer spot as we work lap number four. Hang on to it, Matt Henderson. He bounces off the fence up in turns one and two. Meanwhile, Peyton Lee driving away from him. He has a three-second advantage at the halfway mark over Gordy Gundaker. 3.1 seconds. Reuter goes to the infield. Henderson moves up to the third spot. Reuter spins in the infield as we are past the halfway mark. And will it draw the caution as Reuter rolls back toward the speedway? Indeed it will. Caution waves as Paul Reuter in cart number 23 was in a chance transfer spot. And next thing you knew, he was in the infield. Five laps down, three laps to go. And right now, Peyton Rooney leads the way over Gordy Gundaker and unofficially Matt Henderson with three laps remaining in this one. Blake, did you see what happened to the 23 car of Reuter? I just looked up and he was already spun around. I saw a cloud of dust come at us at the infield. <laughs> That's what we saw. Boy, how about the three wide off of turn number four? They say it's tight quarters and we're going three wide for position. Man, it is, it's been chaotic, Blake. That's the best way to put it. But Peyton Looney, three second advantage on a track this size. That is impressive to be able to drive away like that. That is, and Eric's finding more parts for my late model that you're going to put together for me, Ben. I, I don't think that was part no, of the... I didn't, nope, not, not even a little bit. Hey, come on. Hey, we saw the picture from your boss's garage the other day when he was loading his NASCAR up for the Hall of Fame. We know there's late model parts in there, Blake. So <laughs> lay it on us right now. Is Tony Stewart going to run a late model in 2020 at all? I want to know. I, I can't say. I, no, uh, that was a yes. That, yes. that was a yes. yes. Yeah. Todd Turner put it in his sprint car. Todd Turner printed that. You heard it right there, Blake. Yeah, breaking news. Yep. Yeah. Breaking news. TMZ. Yeah, TMZ, that, we'll let them break the news. No, I don't know what's going to happen. That car's been sitting there for a while, so I would doubt it, honestly. That's okay, buddy. You can't cover it up now. You say whatever you need uh, to say, but we know what you meant. It's already on the forum. There's already a post that says Tony Stewart from the Wales in 2020. I sent an email address change coming for Blake in the near future now. We have the midget at the shop that sits in front when you walk through the doors, and I'm trying to let, let him... Let me run that at Chili Bowl so I can join Ross Weeks. I don't think that's oh. a good idea either. Did you just take a jab at Ross? No, I'm saying, I mean, Ross got to run. He's watching. Hello, Ross. Who would win? If you were in a midget, you and Ross Weeks, who wins? He'd probably be battling it out in the O main. But who would win? I don't know. I mean, I'd like to say, I, he's got unfair advantage. He's raced Chili Bowl. I haven't. Let's just be honest here for a second. Ross was not very good in that car. I, I think I might have to give the advantage to Blake on that one. He Ross got Weiss. us to stay down, though. Ross, we love you. Maybe Ross, Ross, Ross is even sitting there laughing right now thinking, yeah, yeah I, I wasn't very Ross, good. Ross, that was Dustin Jarrett. We're coming back to the green flag. <laughs> Five laps down, three to go, and Peyton Looney is your leader in car number 15. We're back underway. King Gordy Gunday for the new leader now that the lead is a race. And Peyton Looney, oh, he's bouncing through one and two. Here comes Matt Anderson. Oh! Gordy Gundaker, the punt, and the 11 card goes around. And I don't think Mr. Gordy's going to be really happy right now as Matt Henderson just had a big run and had to see the camera angle to see if Gordy came up or if Henderson went down, what happened. But tough was, break for Gordy Gundaker. That was tough because Henderson, I mean, he had that run. Henderson had that run and was almost up alongside Gordy, it looked like. I, I would love to see maybe one of the other angles of it. It just... I don't know. It's easy to be an armchair quarterback, man. Things happen so fast on these racetracks, you know. Blake, Blake, what did you see from the infield, Blake? 
I, I was facing the other way, but boy, Gordy. Oh, shot that man. Beautiful. I know, I have a bad habit of doing that, but how about Gordy, Gordy's car? That's beautiful, a cool tribute to his father. Well, the left side of it looks really good, yeah. the right side not as much anymore, but no, that is a great right side. It's beautiful. I can remember seeing Kevin Gundaker run that car, and that was always one of my favorite cars. Beautiful wrap in that entry. And can now, I age you here, Ben? What's that? That was the year I was born. I don't like you. You are 40, though. Happy birthday a day late. Thanks, Blake. I appreciate it. You're Blake. welcome. All right. All right, so Peyton Rooney, they're picking some debris up here down in turn number four as Peyton Rooney. Oh, no. What's going on? That's your leader. Peyton uh -oh. Rooney pulls to the infield. Oh, no. Three laps to go, and your leader in trouble, Blake Anderson. Can you give us a report? Guys, Peyton Looney has a flat left rear tire. Yep. I can see it from the back stretch. Flat left rear for Peyton Looney in the past. Yep, you see it now. Tough break, and that's kind of been the year that that driver has had. Just cannot catch a break, and Peyton Looney leading away in this heat race and a flat left rear tire. How about Matt Henderson now? They were just checking the steering on that, I think, is what was going on in here. There is that damage on the right front. Peyton Looney going back to the pits, though. Oh, tough break. Well, so Matt Henderson now goes to the lead, and now all of a sudden with three laps to go, Gordy Gundaker could get back into a transfer spot. Right. Now he's got the 27 car at Kimmins, and Kimmins has got a lot of experience on these tiny boarings, the Macons, yep. the Bacon, Bell Flares, yep. the little tracks like that. And right now Kimmins, the 2019 Big Ten Series champion, he's sitting in there. And how about Wyoming's Jason Shearcoke right now in car number 12? He is in the show as they run. Casper, Wyoming, the home for him, home of the Casper Speedway in Casper, Wyoming. Which you've been to. I've been to an eight track in Wyoming. I can't remember if that was it. All right, going green out of turn number four. Three laps to go, top three, go to the feature. Can Gordy Gunday come from the back, back into a transfer spot to the inside of Shearcoke. Hang on, Matt Henderson, and he was up on two wheels down the back straightaway. We'll see two to go this time out of turn number four. Three line for the third spot. Shearcoat's got it. Here comes Gordy. They're right there with Kimmins. What a battle for second on night. Now Gordy up to third. Shearcoat loses the spot. Kimmins in second. Gordy's coming after him. White flag out of turn number four. One more time around the speedway for Matt Henderson in a double zero H. The Loudon Tennessee driver head through one and two for the final time. Gordy Gundaker in second. Kimmins in the third position. Checkered flag will wave in his debut. The Dome's a heat race win for Matt Henderson out of Loudon, Tennessee. Coming home in the second spot, the 11 car of Gordy Guntaker and Greg Kimmins comes home in third, and Gordy gonna tell Matt Henderson he's not real happy about that heat race win. As your third place finisher, the 27 of Greg Kimmins coming home in second, Gordy Guntaker, and your winner, Matt Henderson out of Loudon, Tennessee, and the Luke Crass Motorsports LTC excavating Kenny Creek Firearms, Full Moon Graphics, Dominator Race Products, CBR Chassis heading down to Blake. And Blake, uh, I'm interested. I don't know if you got to see it or not, Blake, but Matt Henderson, right after he took the checkered flag, he hooked a rut and almost stuffed that car on the fence down in turn number one. He did. He went bouncing <laughs> with three to go. 